Life is in the blood. Uh, about 3,000 years ago, 3,500 years ago, Moses said that God told him to write down life is in the blood. Well, think about blood for a minute. What does blood do in our bodies and our brains? Blood circulating through our body, it brings oxygen to the cells, it brings fuel to each cell, and then it takes away the trash. Whatever the cell uses and as leaves as a byproduct, the blood then circulates through and it takes it out to be filtered out in the liver, kidneys, and out it goes. So blood brings life to every cell. The interesting thing about the human brain is that of all the brain cells, none of them store energy. I have stored energy here and fat all around me. But brain cells don't store energy. So each brain cell, whenever it fires, whenever it does its job, uses up the energy that it had and it needs more blood to come with more oxygen and other fuel to energize it to fire again. So you think about how many times in a, a brief second your brain cells fire, well, they have to be fueled each time by blood. So the more blood we can get to flow into the brain, the better the brain works. Some of the things that restrict blood flow, we're gonna look specifically at the front part of the brain here and talk about how you can train yourself to have more blood flowing into the front part of the brain through a biofeedback technique, a neurofeedback technique. Some of the things that inhibit blood flow are stress, certain medications, a blow to the head. And, and we see that when there's restricted blood flowing into the frontal lobes, frontal lobes are about the, the front third, take about a third of the brain. When there's restricted blood flow into that third of the brain, what we get, we get a lot of things that correlate with head injuries, personality changes or impulsivity. and. and uh, difficulty concentrating, but a lot of things associated with ADHD. If you think of that symptom list of what ADHD is, whether it's hyperactivity or difficulty concentrating, uh, can't stay focused to the right thing at the right time, uh, impulse control, lack of self-regulation, on and on this list goes, it is all having to do with restricted blood flow in the front part of the brain. And so the way we deal with that a doctor will prescribe medications like a stimulant medication, Ritalin, Adderall, Concerta, whatever, and it gets more blood to flow into the front part of the brain. We can do it with medication. We do it with caffeine all the time. And that's why Starbucks is, you know, huge everywhere because people are living on four, five, six, seven cups of coffee a day. It's a stimulant, gets more blood in the front part of the brain. Well, what if we could show you how to do that by learning how to do that? Life is in the blood and there's more life, a better quality of life, if we can get more blood into the front part of our brain. So the frontal lobes have a variety of things that they do. Frontal lobes, not just the prefrontal cortex, but the frontal lobe, the whole that front third of the brain long-term memory and you know in other words we take things that we learn and the frontal lobes that's not where the memory is stored but it processes the memory and makes it a long-term memory that's how we learn from the past and we all know people who just don't seem to learn from the past and they keep making the same mistake over and over and over again that needs more blood to flow into the front part of the brain or they have some kind of injury in the front of the brain but it's typical of ADHD kids, certainly. The frontal lobes help us making good choices based upon what we've learned in the past or looking at options in the future, looking at what might happen in the future and making good choices. Help us with self-control, self 
regulation. Abstract thinking, which is seeing things that aren't right in front of you and figuring out how to fix them or how to solve a problem that you may not be holding in your hands, but you're just abstractly thinking about them. They help us to compare things, classify things. It's important for our creativity in life. Also, being socially appropriate, not just blurting out something at the wrong time, saying the wrong kind of thing to the wrong people, not telling jokes at funerals and not laughing in the middle of the church for no reason. You know, socially appropriate stuff gives us empathy, like we really care about what other people are thinking or feeling. That It works with our personality. It helps us shape our personality. Voluntary motor tasks run across the sensory motor strip at the top of the, 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 the head, toward the back of the frontal lobes. And so it works with movement, even speech, being able to talk the way that our, our lips and our mouth, our tongue works in order to say words. Speech is, is part of that. Future planning, looking into the head, planning planning ahead of time. These are all things with the frontal lobes. Also focus, and that's why it's so related to ADHD, is focus. So if we can get more blood to flow into the frontal lobes, they'll work better. They'll help prepare us for the future, help prepare us for performance. We'll perform better, ideally, probably, school, work, when a hard thing comes, when something stressful comes, we'll be able to manage those things better. The frontal lobes need more blood flow. Now we talked about some of the things that inhibit blood flow into the frontal lobes. One of them is stress. Why that happens, I don't know. I just know that like in your hands and your feet, if you're stressed, your hands will get cold, your feet will get cold because blood vessels will start to constrict there. I don't know if that's what happens in the brain, but for some reason, blood flow is inhibited just when we need it the most, when we're under stress. Who in the world is stressed? Well, 80% of all people of all ages, because of work or school or finances or whatever, 80% of pretty much everybody of all ages report being stressed sometime in just the past seven days. It's amazing. But we can also learn how to change and control the blood flow, whether it's in our hands or in our brain. Let me show you how we do this. We use a Mendy. We like a Mendy for HEG neurofeedback. Hemo and cephalography. It's all one word. It's a big word. I don't say it well. But H-E-G. So H-E-G is blood flow, biofeedback in the brain. That, that's what it is. Back when I started doing neurofeedback, it was like 30 years ago, there were two schools that were run in parallel to each other. One was blood flow neurofeedback. And Heschel Tuman at the LA Biofeedback Center, he was saying, if we can teach people how to get more blood to flow into the front part of the brain, it'll work better. We can work with ADHD kids. We can work with people who've had head injuries. We can work with anxiety disorders. We can do all kinds of clinical work if we just get more blood to flow into the brain. But back at the time, 30 years ago, he had these great big sensors that would put around the head and it was clunky computer stuff and it was just really not cool. I mean, it was very effective, but it just simply wasn't cool. On the other parallel side, Barry Sturman and then Siegfried Othmer and a bunch of guys back in the Midwest, they were working on brainwave biofeedback. And Siegfried and his crew, they began to make video games that you played with your brainwaves. And that was cool. We were playing Pac-Man with our brainwaves. We were making things big and small, and we were 
we were playing games with our brain waves. And for my clients, my patients, it was just way cooler to do the brain wave biofeedback than the blood flow biofeedback. Wasn't that blood flow wasn't effective, it just wasn't cool. So I went down the brainwave path and for years worked, have worked in that field. Recently, just a year ago, out of Sweden came the Mendy. Now there are open source blood flow biofeedback devices that you can find. And some of them, I mean, they work really good. What I like about the Mendy is that it is really simple to use and it's relatively inexpensive. So what it has are infrared sensors here and near infrared sensors have been used way back. And you simply put the headband on, slide it over your head, put it on, and it takes a baseline of how much oxygenated blood you have in the frontal lobe. And then by playing a game on your phone, on your iPhone, that's the feedback as you make the game happy and as you make the thing go and make happy noises, you, you would relax, concentrate, breathe, and get into a brain state that requires more oxygenated blood and you get the feedback on your phone. You would use this. I, I have athletes doing it three minutes a day, but after reading a whole bunch of research on this, going back 40 years, uh, probably 10 minutes a day is probably better to use this at. And a lot of the research was done with uh, 30 minute a day sessions in a lab, changing the blood flow in the head 30 minutes a day for about a month. But the changes are significant and we can learn how to get more blood into the front part of the brain if we just have more feedback. Let me give you an example. Back in the day when I was using Siegfried Offmer's neurofeedback equipment, I would not put people, I would not put kids or adults on the neurofeedback system to, to work with that until they had learned how to increase the temperature of their hands by five degrees, five degrees. And what that would take is we would have to give them feedback. We would tape an indoor outdoor thermometer onto one of the fingers of their hands. We got it at Radio Shack for $11.99 or something. And then we teach profound relaxation, profoundly relax the muscles from the bottom up. We do uh, robots to rag dolls, tight to relax. And we would teach the kids and teach the adults how to profoundly relax. They do it for about a week. After four or five, six sessions, at their home, in the easy chair, 15 minutes of profound relaxation, they would notice that they were able to relax their arms and hands so much that they would get warm because the blood vessels would open up and more blood would flow into their hands. Remember mood rings back in the day? That's how they worked, is the warmer your hands, the, you know, the better the, oh, you're a nice person score on the mood ring column. So that's all it is, it was a temperature gauge for your hands. So once somebody learned how to raise the temperature in their hands five degrees, then we'd say, okay, with the right kind of feedback, you can learn how to change and control your brain waves. So let's go to work. So they didn't pay me a whole bunch of money to try to figure that out. They would at least have that skill and that understanding, uh, you know, as a competency. So the same is true in the same way you can learn to change blood flow into your hands, raise the temperature of your hands five degrees or so, you can learn to change the flow of blood and increase the flow of blood into the front part of your head. If you have the right kind of feedback, that's where the Mendy comes in. It's great for this. So I would recommend for the first month, pretty much every day, you'll forget sometimes, won't be able to sometimes, but pretty much every day, 
starting at three minutes and then five minutes and then 10 minutes, pretty much every day for a month. Then after that, every other day, 10 minutes, every other day. And then maybe the third month, maybe just five minutes every other day. And that's what I'd recommend. Susie, my wife, has already, she's great at this. She's terrific with the Mindy. And we were at a conference. It was the National Collegiate Golf Coaches Conference in Las Vegas in December. And I was happy to be there. I like golf. I hear all these golf coaches, Oklahoma State and all over, all over the United States, they're there. So big name golf coaches were there. And Colin Morikawa's coach was the keynote speaker. So as he's talking, he's talking about working with kids, talking about how to encourage people, talking about all these great things that I love. Susie was getting tired and bored and sleepy until she said, wait a minute, I know how to do something. And she turned on in her head that feeling that made the Mindy go and gave her feedback. She turned it on and she had learned how to get more blood into the front part of her brain without the feedback, without the Mindy on her head, without the cell phone in her hand. She had learned how to do it. She'd been using it maybe three or four months. She turned it on and she said she stayed dialed in and engaged the whole rest of the time. Possible to do that. So what would be the benefits of doing this? When we on purpose train to get more blood to flow into the front part of our head, we can expect to have better memory, better ability to learn from the past and apply it in the present. We should be able to make better choices, really examine all of the options and practice self-control. Now, Mendy does not sell their product for clinical application. Mendy sells their product in the wellness and performance market. Wellness and performance market. This is the Mendy, we would recommend it. If you wanna try one, the website is Mendy, M-E-N-D-I dot I-O. You buy it from the company. They will offer a 10% off discount if you sign up for the newsletter. We'll give you a 15% off discount if you use our code Calm Waves, our company, C-A-L-M-W-A-V-E-S, Calm Waves 15, gets you a 15% off buying a Mindy. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it for training the blood to flow into the frontal lobes of the brain, even under stress, even under difficult times. 